Many of you liked the review I did of the CPK3 receiver. Its price was low, but it was a short form kit, not including a case. In this video, I'll describe a suitable enclosure for the kit and the benefits, including easier tuning because the controls are spaced more widely apart and easier to use when portable. Later, I'll demonstrate its performance when outside with a short wire antenna. Inside, it's in a soap dish. I thought it was just the right size and it fits the circuit board, the batteries. I could probably have squeezed a speaker in, but I didn't. The main thing I wanted to do with this was to have more separation of the controls then I could have bigger knobs and easier tuning. And that's particularly important with the shortwave bands where some bands might be 10 megahertz wide and the band change is a bigger control as well. That's better. Volume control less critical, that can still be small. But to do that, I had to put all the controls off the board and I've just got ribbon cable joining them and the LEDs are also off the board but I was able to keep the antenna socket on the board and in conjunction with two screws that you can see at the bottom that's what holds it all together. Just the way that the LEDs stick out the top, the controls out the side, the headphone connection out the bottom and the antenna this way makes housing in a suitable box quite tricky. So what I've done is I've taken out some of the parts and I'm going to have short leads going to more convenient positions on the enclosure I'm going to use. And not only that, but I will have the tuning control probably on the front panel where I can have a large tuning knob, possibly a dial, and that will make selecting stations much, much easier. I have a soap box bought from the local discount shop and I will attempt to put the CPK3 inside it. This will give me a portable general coverage receiver that can just fit in a pocket. This is roughly how I'm going to build it. I'll have the antenna connection at the top I'll align the board so that that sticks out. I'll drill some small holes either side of it for the on and tuning LEDs. I'll have some short wires going to the band and volume control. And most important one, the tuning control will be on the front panel. Right there. If I wanted to there's probably room for a speaker and somewhere I'll fit the headphone socket. I haven't removed the headphone socket from the board, it was quite hard to remove, so I'll just leave it as is. So I'll just have some wires going underneath to another socket from my parts box. On off switch, as you can see, that's on the battery holder. And as this soap box is easy to open, there's no screws required. It just snaps, then that's okay. And I can even change the battery without undoing any screws. In a bag for protection is the detachable antenna. On the bottom part is the main circuit board and the battery compartment. On the side, I've got the volume control as that's the least critical. And on the front panel, I have the tuning control. You could have an even larger control on it that would improve the tuning. You could even make a small dial. And here's the band selector potentiometer. I should mention that the far left is the FM broadcast band. So start there if you want to tune various bands. Then you've got a, uh, about three or four FM broadcast bands with different lower and upper limits then you've got 
some AM broadcast bands, there's a choice of slightly different lower and upper limits and different channel steps. A choice of 1 or 10 kilohertz. Here in Australia, we've got stations at 9 kilohertz intervals, so we'd use the 1 kilohertz uh, settings. Above that, you've got a couple of long wave bands that you heard my previous video where I was picking up some aircraft beacons. Then above that you've got shortwave bands. These go up to band 19. There's actually a lot more bands than this that the receiver is capable of, but they require high resistance. Here I've got a 10K ohm potentiometer, the one supplied in the kit, and the instructions list you all the bands that this covers. A lot of the bands overlap, but it's good having bands that are finer because that improves your ability to tune in stations better. So there's cases where a single frequency might be on three or four or more bands, but it's better to choose a band that is narrower with less tuning range because that improves the ability to tune in stations in a particular segment especially given we're not using a vernier reduction drive and i didn't mention it before but there are other segments of frequencies uh, that if you have a potentiometer that's higher than 10k or maybe you could switch in fixed resistors then you can get coverage up there it's after dark and i'm doing some tuning around i'm starting on short wave on the band that's in there as a favorite and that is around 13 to 14 and a bit megahertz. And we're getting some strong signals. Doing some long wave listening, it's after dark, and I'm hearing two at once. KII, which I think is King Island. and BHI. Now I'm actually connecting the antenna. Before I was only loosely coupled. ESL. One thing I didn't cover in my first video is the favourite and variable setting. You can see in the centre of the picture those three pins. And there's a shorting bar which acts as a switch so you can select one or the other. 
on variable that allows you to cover all the different bands selecting it with the 10k per tensiometer and on favorite that allows you to select one band that band is determined by the resistor that's just below it you probably can't see it but it's 5.1k when we look on the data sheet the nearest one to it is shortwave 11 5.23k it's 13 to 14.3 megahertz thus it's the 22 meter broadcast band and also most of the 20 meter amateur band and the steps there are 5 kilohertz with a set this small I can take it almost anywhere although the telescopic antenna is pretty good I've just run a few meters of wire over the bush for the benefit of the camera I've got the set driving a speaker not super loud but pretty good and right now I'm tuning the FM broadcast band Samstag, 13. Januar, 22.30 Uhr. Das große Projekt, eine Karte von Nordamerika. For the ad hoc warming adventure, the whole family will enjoy. Migration only in cinemas now. That's the start stopping Melbourne traffic first for Kiss 101 100%. New articles, whatever. Oh, well, yes, we love a line item. But are and you, here we are on the AM broadcast band. Uh, nebulous argument that, I mean, the, the research shows that happier employees, employees with more opportunities, and more it's working quite well just off the, the telescopic are grip. To stick around longer and therefore just connected the short wire antenna and getting some country stations. Just moving to a quieter location, a little bit back from the water and the crowds, and might try some shortwave listening. Ambulance operators are urging holidaymakers to respect their staff after an ambulance was vandalised on New Year's Eve. St John responded to 270 events throughout the country between 10 o'clock last night like Radio New Zealand. and 10 o'clock this morning. Just gone to the favourite band, which is the 13 to 14 megahertz range. It covers one broadcast band and an amateur band. And just tuning up from that. Hearing some broadcast signals. Radio New Zealand. So that's something to remember. The favourite band and just past 12 o'clock position is Radio New Zealand on their 13 megahertz frequency. Now we're in the 20 metre amateur band 
and some strong SSB. And that is FT8, which we're hearing on 14 megahertz. More SSB. It's quite strong. So that's our look at the CPK3, put in a soapbox, much more convenient to use and suitable for some casual portable operating. Not quite as good as other receivers I've reviewed, like the AR1780, it's in a completely different league that does SSB and is general coverage, as well as great tuning and digital readout. But hey, it's only $15, it's a kit, you put it together yourself, and there's no doubt other things you could do to make this even better. Uh, for instance, you could do something about um, if you wanted to specialise and have it as a single band only or a small number of bands, then you can do that. Just look at the data sheet and the resistor values and you can customise it. You can also do something to make the tuning easier. And it seems to be a good sounding receiver on AM. So if you wanted to build an amateur AM transceiver, then you could use this as a receiver module. You can. Uh, set it up so it only covers the band that you want. You can experiment with variable resistor values so it could cover only a small segment, maybe only a few kilohertz either side of your crystal frequencies. And if you set it up that way, then it would be a surprisingly good AM receiver um, for casual amateur use. Won't work any DX, but it's very cheap, only $15, very small, so ideal if you wanted to Put this in the box same box as a qrp am transmitter so lots of ideas let me know how you go if you do buy a kit and if you haven't already seen my first video reviewing this then i'd suggest you do so as well uh, more information on this from the cr kits website and there's also an io groups as well where there's discussion and information on it enjoy these videos Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.